Thank you. Uh, I'll stick with Ashraf if you want to know who I am. By the way, Google me. Um, I want to talk, I'm known for saying absurd things. Not because they don't become true, but because they sound absurd. And there's this nice quote that if at first an idea doesn't sound absurd, it's not even worth thinking about. Today I want to give you an idea that we, can't, we don't really use. The question of time. Time is our currency, actually, I think. Because unlike the printing presses of dollars and euros, time, everybody's time is limited. And being one of the very few really limited resources that we know, feel is limited, it makes it very precious, right? So we should think that we live in a knowledge-driven world. That's what we all talk about, right? But still, we're paid on an industrial model. That means, knowledge-driven means Everybody's sitting down and thinking and coming up with great ideas and sharing their knowledge and doing open source projects and just loving each other. Uh, industrial world means that there is man hours and your billable hours and if you don't hit the quota of billable hours, you're fired. Um, but this is the model we work on, right? There's no incentive to share. There's no incentive even to actually create new knowledge because if you get paid for the crap you're doing today, you can wait for someone to replace you, and typically it doesn't happen within whatever 45 years you're working. But the problem with all this is, the problem with sharing, I mean, is, if you find someone who takes your knowledge and simply offers his time at a cheaper price applying it, you're buggered, right? And for a long time, this has been the model of offshoring. And offshoring is great because we finally found out that the world is round. And so far, offshoring has been about going east. And just a month ago, I read about the first Chinese firm offshoring their call center to Alabama, USA. <laughs> Offering their time at a lower rate. On the other hand, there's just not enough time, right? There's not enough people. We would hire, if anybody here is a great IT guy, all of them, so if you look, are looking for a new job, you can come to me later on, and we'll have a word about it. There's not enough time of IT people there. It's just not there. There are not enough people there who can spend their time solving big problems. And yet, we just don't have respect for other people's time. We don't respect their time. And most of our time in IT, we don't do the things that we're talking about, right? This is not, IT is not eating their own dog food. We talk about um, doing new things and changing the enterprise and changing other people's life, and yet we spend all of our time, or 80% of our time, in just keeping the lights on the way they are. We don't even want a different color. <coughs> but still, the demand of IT time, the, 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 the time that isn't filled up, is actually increasing or at least staying the same. So I think there should be kind of a time bank, right? Because if we could store our time, if we had contributed something and got time back for this, then we could withdraw time to do cool stuff like contribute to Apache or Hadoop or something else. We should actually just go and be able to contribute there. But that means that we are able to convert our time by our own choice, right? We can convert our time to nothing by watching television, which is quite popular. We can convert our time to quality by just spending more time to solve a problem or get together with some colleagues and do it. We can convert our time to innovation and think about new things, or we can actually convert our time to money because there are enough people out there who pay us by the billable hour. But in order to multiply this, we have to build a time machine. Actually, a machine that takes over our work right, and multiplies us. So my problem today is that I can be paid by the billable hour, 
but that hour then is gone. There's no way to multiply it. And if I could have a machine doing the stuffs that I, things that I do, it would multiply myself if I was actually paid for the knowledge. And all this cloud computing stuff that we've been talking about means we're getting paid for results, not for time. That means I can multiply myself by using a machine and by giving back to these kind of machines, I can actually become in control, I can contribute there and get in control of my time. This is the whole idea. And every time my knowledge is used, now here comes the difference to billable hours. Every time my knowledge is used, I'm due some sort of credit. Now that could be monetary credit, but that could also be karma points or a reward. Someone saying, hey, cool, actually. A lot of open source people just do it so someone tells them, cool. Right? And this is a reward for the time I spent. So every time I spent some time, and every time that is used, the time that I've invested, I'm due a reward. It sounds very marketish, yeah? It's not so outlandish. <coughs> I believe, and we are very much working towards this, that machines can give us this freedom with our time if we accept the fact that we can teach machines and they can just do stuff while we spend our time with better things. So uh, let's get going, basically, before time runs out. And if that's not esoteric enough for you, then you can register to try a machine out like this. Thank you. <laughs>